to Earth has uh, wizards now. <laughs> a good comic book movie should always respect its roots. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today, we'll be counting down the top 10 Thor Ragnarok Easter eggs. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be looking at Easter eggs, notable cameos, references to source material, and subtle connections to the larger Marvel Cinematic Universe from Thor's third cinematic outing. Beware ye who enter here, spoilers abound. Hey man, we're about to jump on that ginormous spaceship. You wanna come? Well, you do seem like you're in desperate need of leadership. Why, thank you. Number 10, Old King Thor. So simple, even a blind man could see it. <laughs> now you remind me of Dad. More so than in any previous film, Chris Hemsworth's Thor was really put through the ringer in Ragnarok. By the end of the movie, Thor has notably suffered a permanent injury, the loss of an eye. You're late. You're missing an eye. This naturally brings to mind Thor's father, Odin, and his signature golden eye patch. But the new look is more than an homage to his dearly departed dad. A one-eyed version of Thor was introduced to the comic book readers in 2012. Known as Old King Thor, this older, more battle-scarred version of the God of Thunder has, much like our MCU Thor, ascended to the throne of Asgard. It's a nice little nod to the more recent source material. So, King of Asgard. Number 9. Planet Hulk This one isn't exactly subtle, but for cinema-goers who are unfamiliar with Marvel Comics, the inspiration for Hulk's storyline in Ragnarok might not be common knowledge. Of all the Hulk stories that fans have asked to see adapted as a Hulk solo film, Planet Hulk is undeniably one of the most popular. Given the complications of Hulk's film rights, however, chances of the big green rage machine getting his own flick seem slim. Thankfully, Marvel did the next best thing by building Planet Hulk into this Thor film. The planet Sakaar, Meek and Korg, the gladiator theme, even Hulk's armor and weapons, they're all taken from the pages of this fan favorite comic book story arc. <sighs> That's it's in my brain now. Number 8. Carlo the Melted Cousin. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Carlo? I pardon you. Oh, thank you. This little Easter egg, by contrast, is about as subtle a nod as you can get. Jeff Goldblum's Grandmaster is many things. He's quirky, enthusiastic, and undeniably successful. One thing he is most certainly not, however, is forgiving. Not even when family is involved. We've located your cousin. Uh, oh good. Yeah, come on. I think you're gonna like this. Carlo is the Grandmaster's cousin, and unfortunately for him, he made the mistake of crossing his powerful relation and getting caught. In a scene that helps audience members understand the Grandmaster's odd personality and values, Carlo was pardoned by his cousin only to be melted into a puddle. You're officially pardoned from life. So, where did this doomed character get his name? None other than Planet Hulk artist Carlo Pagulian. I'm stepping in it. I'm stepping in it. Look. Wow. Number seven, Contest of Champions. My name is Grandmaster. I preside over a little harlequinade called the Contest of Champions. People come from far and wide to unwillingly participate in it, and you, my friend, might just be part of the new cast. The Grandmaster likes games, violent games to be specific. Though in the comics, the Grandmaster has nothing to do with the planet Sakaar or the events leading up to Ragnarok, he does have a long history of pitting iconic heroes against each other in his Contest of Champions. The three-issue miniseries, released in 1982, saw some of the biggest names trade blows. It has since been adapted into a video game and was revisited in 2015 with a 10-issue miniseries. Suffice to say, seeing this character and his contest worked into the plot of Thor Ragnarok was a delightful addition. Bad news. My beloved exalted champion has turned up missing. Take to the streets. Celebrate my champion. Who's that? Well, he kind of runs the place. You actually lived in his house for a while. Number six, Astonishingly Savage. You know, I haven't seen this beloved champion he talks of, but I've heard he's astonishingly savage. Two simple words, but they sure carry a lot of meaning for fans of the Hulk. When Loki refers to the Grandmaster's champion as astonishingly savage, these words surely elicited cheers and or squeals of delight from more than one Marvel enthusiast in the audience. You see, some of the Incredible Hulk's earliest appearances were in the Tales to Astonish comic series, which would eventually be retitled The Incredible Hulk, after issue 101. 
As for the word Savage, it's also associated with the Green Goliath, most notably the 2014 Savage Hulk comic series. Brought together, these two words are a nice homage to the character's source material, both his early years and more recent adventures. Number 5. Scrapper 142 See, uh, that's the one that put me in here. Oh, uh, yeah, Scrapper 142. Gotta watch out for those Asgardians, man. They are hard to perish. Though she is a formidable warrior and living legend in Asgard, our dear Valkyrie is living a very different sort of life on the planet Sakaar when we meet her, that of a hard-drinking Scrapper intent on forgetting her heritage. In fact, at one point, the Grandmaster simply refers to her as Scrapper 142, a title certainly unbefitting of one of Asgard's elite. Whenever we get to talking, Topaz, about Scrapper 142, what do I always say? She is the, and it starts with a B. Trash. No. Thankfully, this identifier is more than just the throwaway number it appears to be. The character actually made her first appearance in The Incredible Hulk number 142. Someone clearly did their homework. Number 4. A Hemsworth Brother Tell my story. Build a statue for me. We will build a big statue for you. With my helmet on. With the big bendy horns. I will tell father what you did here today. Though Thor's siblings certainly don't make his life very easy, actor Chris Hemsworth seems to have a great relationship with his two actor brothers. Liam is arguably the better known of the two, but you'll likely recognize the eldest brother Luke from the HBO series Westworld. Within the MCU, however, he gets to play Thor, or rather, an Asgardian actor who gets to play the role of Thor. Of course, he wasn't the only recognizable face in the scene. Matt Damon hilariously donned the guise of Loki, while Jurassic Park actor Sam Neill got to rock the eye patch as an Asgardian in the role of Odin. You were merely a little blue baby icicle that melted this old fool's heart. Number 3. Throg Sorry about that time. I turned you into a frog. It was a wonderful joke. It was indeed hilarious. What a treat! Throg is to Thor as Spider-Ham is to Spider-Man. As in, an animal version of the superhero so ridiculous that you'd never expect to see them find a place in a live-action film. To be fair, Throg never really comes to life in the film, but in the aforementioned Asgardian theater production, Matt Damon's Loki makes reference to having turned Thor into a frog at some point in the past, a clear reference to the amphibious Thor who debuted in the 1980s. For those not in the know, Throg is the wielder of Frogjolnir and a member of the Pet Avengers. And the fact that he even got a vague illusion in Thor Ragnarok is amazing. Number 2. Familiar Faces as Past Champions Odd though he might be, Beta Ray Bill is a character that Marvel devotees have been itching to see get some lip service on the big screen ever since Thor was first introduced. People thought they'd spotted him amidst the collector's display cases in Guardians of the Galaxy, but James Gunn debunked that theory. With Thor Ragnarok, however, his likeness finally became canon. His unmistakable mug is one of the faces built into the Grandmaster's Tower. Of course, he's not alone. Fans have also seemingly identified Ares, the Bi-Beast, and maybe Man-Thing? If only we could have gotten some flashbacks to when they were in the arena. Number 1. The Fake Gauntlet Reveal Odin's Treasures Fake! Most of the stuff in here is fake. Call it an easter egg or call it a quick bit of MCU retconning. We call it a big deal in the guise of a throwaway line. The Infinity Gauntlet, shown to be housing the much sought after Infinity Stones, was briefly shown in Thor's MCU debut in 2011, secured in the Asgardian vaults. But then, much to the confusion of detail-oriented fans, Thanos was seen wearing an empty Infinity Gauntlet in the post credit scene of Avengers Age of Ultron. Were there two gauntlets? Did Thanos steal it off-screen? Nope. While Hela's return to Asgard did ultimately result in its destruction, the silver lining is, she's got an eye for spotting fakes. The Asgardians were guarding a knockoff. How was I supposed to know? I can't see into the future, I'm not a witch. No? Well, why'd you dress like one? Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.